Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Breakdown. I'm your host, Ron Humiston. Sitting down, as always, is the man, the Stop. myth. The le- okay, fine. Is you the said guy. you wanted to do something original right before we like, Buddy, said nothing live. about me is original. That is a nice haircut, though. That's original. I don't know that it is. I think I found a picture online of somebody else. Like, hey, can you do? I want to look like can, this. I want to look like that person. But I've really wanted to go into a barber shop. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what do you guys call them? Because you have hair. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I honestly don't know. Is it a salon for you? Because it's not no. a barber shop. Like, let's just be real. You're too pretty for a barber <laughs> shop. <laughs> it's the closest thing that I've come to a barber shop. But I just want to go in there and be like, hey, can you just take a little off the top? <laughs> They, they just like rub their hand across. Yeah, like, well, there you it's go. Pretty smooth. Like yeah, how much? Ten bucks. You don't yeah. even have five o'clock shadow. What do you want us to do here? <laughs> I get one like on the back. <laughs> I get. I could rock that cul-de-sac if I let it go. Uh, yeah, cul-de-sac, baby. Sorry. Hey, if you're new to the breakdown, <laughs> um, we this normally is don't not talk abnormal. about my hair or lack thereof. That is true, but this is the perfect representation of the rabbit trails that can and it just happens often do sometimes happen. We'll go super shallow. And then super deep. Incredibly deep like that. Yeah. So uh, if you are new to the breakdown, um, if you're watching on YouTube, he's Nick. I'm Jaron. Like I said last week, he's the important person. (laughs) I'm still trying to figure out. I'm having an identity crisis the more seasons we do of the breakdown. I have more people that are like, I really appreciate when Jaron pipes in. I think that's their polite way of saying, you don't have to talk the whole time, Nick. They really do. They're That's like, a, oh, I, I appreciate what Jaron said on the podcast. Okay, I'm like, then why am I on it? Let's flesh this out since we're already down the rabbit hole. <laughs> we're track. already down. Okay, let's go. Uh, Where since do you want to go? All, since we're all in a sanctification process. Smack dab in the middle. This of it, is this is the, just a moment of transparency. This is the work the Lord is doing inside of me. I honestly don't know what I bring to the breakdown. Like if we're just being brass tacks, honest to goodness, Hey, so if you're listening to the breakdown right now, what we would encourage you to do, just send an encouraging text no, no, no. to the line and saying, Jaron, this no, no, is no. what you bring to the breakdown. Not looking right? for that. Like, but there is the, um, and we've talked a lot about this, I think, throughout the seasons, just in the way, like, in some ways, Satan can use your mind to play tricks. Oh, 100%. The, the lies you believe. And, like, mm. not in, like, a, oh, I don't know who I am. Not that at all. But, yep. like, in an honest, sincere way, what you have been gifted with. <clears throat> It is you're very quick on your feet. You're very biblically knowledgeable. The way that you can respond, the the way that you're not afraid um, to say hard things, and most of the time, say them. <laughs> with, most the, most of the time, I say them uh, now with okay, love and grace. But you have heard me say talking about the church, like I don't know, like we've I've I've, I've moment of transparency, like I have said. Because we talked about launching an online campus and stuff like mm, that. Mm-hmm. We were in my car driving back from Eldon, mm-hmm. and I said, am I a pastor worth having an online campus for? And so in the same breath, yeah, yeah. I was saying the same thing. Yeah. Like, what do I bring the, to the table as a senior pastor? And so, and and what's great about it is if we know what we bring to the table, <laughs> that's going to be the easiest place for pride. And our egos to take over. But Mm. if we walk into our ministries and it's like, I have no idea what the Lord is doing and why he is doing this in and through us, that's the best place to be. So the fact that you don't know what you bring to the breakdown is what you bring to the breakdown. Praise the Lord. But if you come in and sit down and it's like, all right, you know, we got the beauty. Pipe down over there, buddy. We got the brains. (laughs) You know, you're not even pinky in the brain. That's not us. Like, it's the beauty and the beast. Is what we're doing here, right? Yep, I'm beast. You, you're, no, beauty. you're the beauty. I'm. Nah. I go beast mode. <laughs> no, I don't know. So, uh, but that's what you bring to the breakdown. Yeah. You're the beauty. It honestly, it's uh, eye candy. It <laughs> awesome. <laughs> your eye candy, and your wife doesn't even watch the breakdown, oh, or let man. alone listen to it. I know. It's, it's pray for her. I pray. pray no. for me. Forget that. <laughs> don't pray for her. Um, no, no it's it's one of the fun things. It's been because you talk about this on Sunday mornings mm-hmm. where. I think there's a common misconception um, in church world where the guy on the stage is the most knowledgeable and he's talking to or at the audience or the congregation. And you've said many a times like, hey, there's times where the Lord is very clearly in my prep, Mm. even while I'm preaching, speaking to me like, hey, don't say that. That's just for you. Oh, yeah. Um, Where like on the breakdown where it I through my lens and viewpoint of what I would bring, I'm more of the facilitator mm-hmm. to lob you questions and let you answer them. Yeah. And then I'm over here 
uh, just like sponging and absorbing it all in and everybody just gets to see live action like hold on drunk still processing through that we can't move on because i'm like still <laughs> there's a look connecting the dots That's yeah when good. i look like crooked eyed my eyes start doing the back and it's forth it's been a while since i've came out of sermon prep and said like hey this is where and you're just like i freaking hate you yep which I think is your quote. The last couple times it's been, hey, can I say that? Which immediately is no. <laughs> immediately. I've already told the staff, like, uh, when we onboarded Nathan, yeah. I said, hey, Thursdays, like, Nick is unavailable. Come to Taylor. Come to me. Like, Nick is off limits. He will sometimes poke his head out to get a, you know, brain break. And he may come ask you, you know, certain things. And I said, that's your chance to speak into it. I said, if he comes to you and says, can I say this? Your immediate answer is no. Because what's about to follow is if he's questioning it, it's probably not. It's something for the breakdown. So here's the thing, too. That, like, Let's just acknowledge. Okay, let's just say it openly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a certain level of restraint that the Holy Spirit grabs a hold of me. And some people are like, it feels like there's no restraint at times. And it's like, sadly, that is restraint. Like yeah. Some of the things I want to say... And it, it's not that, hey, it's not the Holy Spirit saying, hey, that's for you. That's for you. Like, that's for your heart and mind. <laughs> that's, that's for your walk. Yeah. There's some things he's like, don't do it. Please just don't. Just don't do it. And there's, there's no fruit at the end of that. And there's been fun things like no when good you have fruit. come out yeah. and said that where mm -hmm. I know coming into it's like, oh, yeah, you can hear the pin drop in the room. You could feel the, <gasps> yeah. like, that kind of like. Even Sunday, my wife was like, you were a little squirrely second service. And I was like, I felt it was normal. Absolutely not. I need like a, I, I need the people to speak and I need like a way to know, like not if the sermon was good or not. I, it, I'm just trying to share what the Lord puts on my heart. What do you want to know? What does she mean by that? Am I really, what, what was squirrely about second, specifically she said second service. I don't know if that's because that's the one she was in. Okay. So for me, when I've preached, this is second service is the most full service. Oh yeah. So there's, uh, there there's already, a different level of energy, different level 100%, of energy. 100%. And you've done the message once. And for us, we know the first service message has to be cut. So there's usually mm -hmm. a section that we don't preach, yep. or we don't go as deep because we do, you don't have the so time. So you know, like, oh, okay, I felt really good about saying it that way, the transition. Now I also have an additional 10 yeah. minutes that I could really dive into this. And so there's been times where it's like, oh, that that was not in first services message. Yeah. And I, it's I so can, fun in life groups, even in the college life group. Somebody will be like, I liked when he said this. This was he didn't out. say that in my he, Yeah, he's no. like, when did you say that? And then they'll fight about it. Well, he said it in first and third, but you didn't say in second or vice versa. And I'm just like, guys, it's okay. Some people it in your okay. life group came to all three services on Sunday. I looked at him. I was like, what are you doing? Girls, what are you doing? <laughs> like, how many times are you going to go to church? And I'm like, all three? And I was like. But you only get credit for one. That's exactly right. We're not marking no. you down. Um, we don't. Yeah. No, it's good. So I. I I will make you promise this week. That Let me I know will, where I go squirrely. I will stand in. Oh, no, no. I'm going to do it live action. I'm going to stand in the back like a ring girl with the card. <laughs> and just like green, <laughs> yellow, girl. red. Red. Like you right are. There. So red is squirrely. Green is like, you're good. Yeah, green. Yellow, you're, you're, you're flirting with it. Yeah, you're, yeah. Okay. If I just start pacing in the back of the room, you'll know. Like, So if you just start running out the back doors, <laughs> like, that's like Jerron just, just left the building. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. I'll try not to good do to know. it in a... Um, there's a few people that, uh, their face gives them away. There's only a few though. Most people have a pretty good poker face. Oh, I don't. And so when I'll say something that I think is going to be a zinger, like I really, like, I thought I said something that was kind of a zinger this Sunday, but it, I didn't feel like it went over like a zinger. So when I was talking about like, did you ever consider like the prayer of faith of a righteous person produces much? And it's like, could the reason that we feel like sometimes God doesn't hear our prayers is because we're not saying it in a prayer of faith? Like I thought, because I remember even kind of like, ooh, like I made the face like, I know that's going to hurt a little bit. Like that's that's a tough one to, that's a tough pill to swallow, but it is but it is biblical. Did you do that in first service? See, Real that's talk, I do not remember hearing that in first yeah, service. Yeah, I think it was second and third. Because I sat through first, I left, I looked at the clock and I was like, three minutes, he's laying in the plane, yeah. I'll go. Or, you know, like we've been talking about, you know, just the role of biblical men um, within the context of biblical marriage. And like we are to be the spiritual leaders and to step into that. Like those are hard conversations. 
you know, that we need to reject passivity. We yep. need to take ownership. We need to take responsibility. We need to lead well. And how that involves your wife instead of, hey, woman, you know, just get in the kitchen, find the vacuum. Like, that's not biblical. Do these tasks. Yeah, no, 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 no. And so, like, I knew there was going to be a few things, but sometimes I'll say what I think is going to be a zinger. And it was like, oh, yeah, it's just Nick preaching. I don't it, know. When I preach before, the things that I think be like, ooh, that's going to hit never hit it's yeah. always the things i'm like oh i could have skated over that and it's like that was so helpful or man that was really challenging yeah. when you said it's like really and that's what i love about life groups because you'll sit in a group let it be 8 12 16 people and we ask the opening question hey what stood out to you in the sermon mm-hmm. and like there's some things it wasn't even the main point it was just like a little little tidbit yep. right there and they're like that was so good and i was like that's... like i chewed on that all afternoon yeah, yeah. And it's just like that's crazy that that's what stood out to you like i like that so. Here's the I've been um, I've been jotting down notes during the service oh, specifically yeah, yeah, yeah. for the breakdown like things that stood out to me oh, even better just as a hey we're all in process fun thing so um, you started off and I love the way you started off the message uh, how the he- uh, how the heck uh, do we get out of this mess we find ourselves in that goes all the way back to being in the garden yeah. like I just loved how you you picture framed that um, and so we went back to Yahweh addresses Adam, not Eve, when he confronts mm. them both after they've sinned, which, again, just the simple clarifying thing. Like, we've all read Genesis. Sorry, that's a presumptive statement. Um, if you've grown up in church, you've you've heard Adam and Eve, you've read Genesis. Yeah, for like, sure. this is a story that you, you may check out a little bit, like, oh, what's he going to say? And it's like, right there. Um, and even the way... Uh, the personality you brought to it, like visually watching you on stage where you were doing the action of like, Hey, uh, I'm talking to Eve, but I'm looking at Adam Mm -hmm. knowing like, this is your role. Like you should be doing something and you're not, you know? Um, and then, uh, this for me, Yahweh responds within the biblical structure of marriage where Satan responds outside. So instead of going to Adam, he goes to Eve Mm -hmm. Instead of going to Eve, Yahweh goes to Adam and addresses him. Um, and I just, every time you say this, this is a quote I love you said in various ways. Sometimes we're just stupid and have to bear the weight of our own consequences. <laughs> yep. It's I sin. Mean, it is. God's not punishing us yep. for doing or not doing something. Yep. He gave us free will. We chose to sin. Yep. We have to wallow in and it's sin. And it's a theological doctrine that we have to understand that God isn't punishing us because our punishment was taken on the cross. Mm-hmm. And so to say, oh, God's punishing me for this, like you're actually attacking the character of God because that's double jeopardy. Yep. And our whole law is based on that. You can't be punished for the same cri- crime twice. Yeah. So what am I going through? Consequences. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, your sin is paid for at the cross and the blood of Jesus covers you. But because of that, there still is consequences. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing yeah. uh, to tie it up, um, I need to run to my father, not keep things from him. Oh. That was the doozy of a zinger for me. Yeah. Because how many times as I look back in my life, do I feel um, that I like I'm ashamed of my sin, mm-hmm. and therefore I have disgraced my father, yeah. my heavenly father. Yeah. Um, and I take maybe some of the same feelings I would have with my earthly father when I disappoint him or let him down. For sure. Um, with with my heavenly father, and instead of running to him, I run away with guilt and shame and condemnation. Um, and even the line you said, if I'm not even going to try to quote you something to the effect of, um, if you feel like the Lord's far from you, he Mm. isn't, he's actually close. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, how many times have I believed the lie that I'm running away and he's standing back there waiting for me to turn around and run back to him the distance there in a way where it's like, no, no, I'm running away and he's chasing after me. Yeah. He's leaving the 99 coming after the one. And the moment you turn around, there's your father. Yeah. Like I don't have to turn around and run back to him. I just have to turn around Mm -hmm. and his arms are open. It's like, okay. So good. Okay. So, um, in life group, like, cause we, me and my wife attend a life group. We don't even lead that life group. We attend it, and we have leaders that are very— Wait, you're a normal person? I'm just a normal person. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if you didn't know that about me. And so I'll say even things like— It was It was kind of weird the first few times, or if we ever have a new person, I always have to, like, hey, like, I'm just Nick. Now, if there's something I need to clarify, I can, but I'm just Nick. And so we ask the question, hey, what stood out to you in the sermon? And I'll say, you know what stood out to me? And some people are like, <laughs> what? Like— Something stands out to you? you? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and this was not in my notes. And I really do believe like, man, the Holy Spirit hit me. Cause when I said it, like there was that, it was, a, I felt a small pause, like, Ooh, I'm going to, I'm going to chew on that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to marinate on that where again, I'm a big fan of the paradox mm -hmm. of all of this. And so when we're talking about this bruise heel, bruise head, it's the same events, mm -hmm. you know, the death, the the execution of Jesus is the exaltation of Jesus. Like I I love those kind of sit in the tension, the mm -hmm. paradox type of things, where and I had said that God's battle plan is also His rescue mission, mm -hmm. and it's like, and when I said it, I was like, I have never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. Like where it felt like my my mouth said it before my brain could process mm -hmm. it. Which, when that normally happens, is not a good thing. Going That's back a, to oh, no. Nick could say anything, but I, I had said that, and it's like that is so true that his battle plan is his rescue mission, mm -hmm. and it's like, dang, that's good. Like, that was totally not me. That's where you walk off the stage and be like, I have no idea what I said, and the Holy Spirit's like, that'll do, pig. That'll do. <laughs> Just, thank you for yeah. for your sermon. Yeah, thank Those you. Out of the way. Um. Yeah, never mind. Thank oh, you. you're good. So. So how are we doing? What what, what else? We well, we, we got we got some questions this week. I we have to cut I'm like excited. the normal just like back the and forth because like we have we got some. This is probably the most questions we've ever had, and some. Um, Thank you to the breakdown audience. Some deep, yeah. Were like, they coming in on like? Do we know where they, they were coming, coming in on, on a Sunday? Yep. As they're sitting yep. there, they're Good. coming in on Sunday because that's when it probably hit. I'm yep. saying, oh, hold on. And the last couple, I sent the message out. I was sitting in first service. But even the last couple of weeks, you have like you've um, dripped in mm -hmm. the breakdown. Yeah. And I think even that just the oh, that's right. Like I remember listening to an episode of the break. Like there's something out there. And that's so good. we're going to flesh through these questions. Go. Yeah. Um, I've got a TV. So if it looks weird, I'm reading the question. So <laughs> no, it doesn't um, look I don't, weird because I don't the have them memorized. Right I'm not that person. That's good. Um, so the first question, uh, Nick, can you flesh out? Um, like, let me just read it. Let's yeah, just read it. It's, Nick, it's a doozy. can you flesh out what exactly can prohibit the Lord from hearing our prayers on the breakdown? Not, yeah, you know what they're saying. Okay. This is the first time I've ever heard anything like that. Yeah. So we, we have that cultural Christianity mm -hmm. that the Lord hears all our prayers. Mm -hmm. Like I Evan love Almighty you all. in the movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like Evan Almighty. He's like, oh, why is everybody yeah. that? That is not biblical. Mm -hmm. And so when we're asking like, why doesn't the Lord hear my prayers? You might need to check your heart because there could be some things that are prohibiting that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and, and then in another instance, we might feel, why isn't the Lord hearing my prayers? Sometimes his silence is the answer. Be is the answer um, because we are more focused on the answer to our question than his presence. So the genie in the bottle kind of reference, like I'm going to, I'm going to come to the genie, Yep. rub the lamp, ask my questions, and then once I've yeah. got my need from you. Yeah, know. where his answer is actually his presence. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes his answer is just no. Yeah. So there's there's a great article, and um, we could share it if we wanted to. I don't know. It's not hard like, to Google. Yeah. Um, but this article gives us like, hey, what are eight reasons, biblical, backed by Scripture, not mm -hmm. just like, what this I think, thought. I feel, I believe. Exactly. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're always going to go to the Word. Um, and so here are eight reasons why the Lord, um, how do they word it? Eight reasons God doesn't hear your prayers. <laughs> and so uh, I love the first little line. Growing up, most parents tell their kids that God hears every prayer. When it comes to prayers, you seemingly just throw one up there and the big guy upstairs will put it on the list. Like Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, the one-liner, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, dang, okay. So here are here are eight reasons. Number one, you ignore the poor. Proverbs twenty-one thirteen. Dang, just coming out strong, just swinging for the fences, baby. Goodness. You ignore the poor. Proverbs twenty-one thirteen. One who shuts his ear to the outcry of the poor will also cry out himself and not be answered. So, in no uncertain terms, God takes care. Of the poor, he takes our care of the poor very seriously, and and are you knowingly and um, pompously ignoring the cries of the needy? Your prayer life could suffer. So I like how they put it in those kind of terms. Like, yes, God takes our care of the poor very seriously. We could be, our life could suffer mm -hmm. in that. It's not a promise that it will. Yeah, but. 
scripture is telling us that like, hey, you igni- ignore the cry of the poor, the Lord will ignore your cry. Right. So number two, you doubt that God can give you wisdom. James 1, 5 to 7. Um, and this is like the only passage in the New Testament that actually does say that faith can get what you want. Right. So just go with it. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all generously without reproach and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven, tossed by the wind. For that person ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. That's why the Lord has answered my prayer. I mean, I it, and that's kind of where I was going within that line of like, hey, the faithful was one of the, it, faithfulness is one of the fruit, is, the, is one of the nine characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. Mm-hmm. And, and so, applying that to our prayer life. I mean, that the verse is what it is. Uh, you're being too prideful, so staying in James 4, 6, shows that the opposition of God when the proud refuse to be humbled, saying, but he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So pride is that antithesis of a thriving prayer life. If you're walking in arrogantly and prideful into your prayer life and, and how you are... Uh, running to his feet like that's gonna that's gonna inhibit some things right you are unjustly violent isaiah 115 records the word of the lord regarding unjust violence saying so when you spread out your hands in prayer i will hide my eyes from you yes even though you offer many prayers i will not be listening your hands are covered with blood and then the rain started, and we're going to start building an ark What did now. you say? That then? <laughs> yeah, like at the moment, he's like, yep, right there. That right there. one right there. Unjust violence right there. Number five. And this was another one that I was mentioning. You're insensitive to your wife. Ooh. That's why you should stay single, guys. So the Lord will hear your prayers. No. All right. So for <laughs> heard, heard it first on the breakdown. First Peter 3, 7. Uh, probably one of the most frightening passages, right? Let's just be honest. But. You husbands, in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way as with someone weaker since she is a woman and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. So when a husband is not showing honor to his wife, his prayers are bouncing right back down off the ceiling. Three more to go, guys. Isn't this fun? So glad we tuned into the breakdown. Feels so good right now. Yes. Man, James is hitting again. You have selfish motives, James 4, 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong mm-hmm. motives so that you may spend what you request on your pleasures. There's a reason I do not have a Ferrari. Mm. There's a reason I drive yeah, a Ford. Yeah, you're not, you haven't prayed for it. I have wrong <laughs> motives, right? And so. Dude, that one hit me personally because here's the other thing that goes directly in the face against the whole name it claim it the mm-hmm. prosperity gospel mm-hmm. if you just pray god will give no he won't he will not allow the, the a lack of stewardship amongst his people yeah. like he he's not going to just we, he's a good father We've talked about that. Oh, he's a good father. He gives good gifts. I think Luke kind of mentioned that a little bit um, in his his worship night or whatever he was talking oh, about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Sunday night we had that worship night, and he was talking about that. Yes, a good father gives good gifts, and a good father says no. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I have four kids. Hey, can I have that? No, you're going to spend your money on foolish things. I'm not going to allow you to do that. Mm-hmm. But we only want the good father that only gives, and that's the problem we have. We want the father that gives gifts. And when we think good gifts, we think of like good in our terms. Yeah, good in our terms. We don't understand. No, what's good mean by him? So so that's the one that smacked you a little bit. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's always the one like we're we're in my wife and I were having this conversation just recently because we're on Thursday going to look at a house. And mm-hmm. so like Lord, we we've been bathing that in prayer and just hey, if this is something you would have for us. But there was this like pit in my stomach was like, would I be happy? Yeah. Would I be satisfied? Would mm. I be content? If the answer was no, wait, 
like or is am, is the framework of my prayer that that is the only option that's good Number seven, you love your sin so much. Psalm sixty six eighteen. if I regard wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. So the Lord does not tolerate wickedness uh, as his roommates in the human heart. He, he does not share his glory, his platform, like his throne with anyone and anything. So like you love your sin a lot. Yeah. You know, because so many people struggling in their sin. Is it really even a struggle? And it's like, Lord, just take this from me. You don't want him to take that from you. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. That's not a prayer of faith. You love that too much. You got to hate what's in yeah. you. Because you're not trying to do anything. Yeah. And then lastly, and this one's, I would say, pretty relevant to what's going on in the Middle East. I'll buckle up. You mistreat God's people. Micah 3, 2 to 5 is a passage containing vivid imagery of what God thinks of those who mistreat his people, including false prophets and leaders. And so when you mess with God's precious, precious saints, he does not hear you even when you cry out. Mm -hmm. And so there's, a, there's the whole passage there. But um, he's saying, you know, skipping down they when they cry out to the Lord, but he will not answer them. But instead, he will hide his face from them at the time because they have practiced evil deeds and so this is so like let's go full not full circle but um there's little acronyms about prayer that are cool right acts a-c-t-e-s mm -hmm. and they stand for something i've always been a proponent of pray what's praying about p-r-a-y but there's an order to it praise mm -hmm. repent mm -hmm. then you ask mm -hmm. then you yield right and so we, we starting our prayer is no matter how long, short it is, start with a quick word of praise, you know, and is that not what we see in the disciples prayer? Not the Lord's prayer. Lord knew how to pray. He gave that prayer to the disciples in Matthew six. He says, our father who art in heaven, there's, there's a, there's a word of praise there. Mm -hmm. And then you move to repentance. So if there's any of these things that are going on in our hearts, Lord, I, I know I love my sin too much and I need brokenness in this. Like addressing that to the Lord, that's where repentance, and then there's an asking, and then there's a yielding. Because mm -hmm. it does tell us, ask, knock, seek, right? There, that is biblical, mm -hmm. but it's the heart to which we are asking. It's the heart to which we are knocking. It's the heart to which we are seeking. And if the heart's wrong, why would we expect the Lord to hear us? So th those are eight biblical rooted in scripture reasons where the Lord would not want to hear our prayers. So we'll, uh, we'll put that link in the, yeah, in the it's great article. So, or that article so that you can save it, read it, have it, have <laughs> it for it. yourself. Um, ask, ask the, uh, pastor at the new church that you're going to. Where the thoughts <laughs> now are that you offended, no. <laughs> hey, no, that's good. Um, okay. Number the, two. uh, question number two, Ooh, and, and I was, go. Um, before I read this, <laughs> he said because before. I, I was reading this, yeah. so the question starts off regarding Genesis 3.15. This is Genesis 3.15. Yeah, always good. I, I love that. We're this is Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Mm -hmm. Then he continues on in 16 to the woman. He said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing, yeah. and in pain you shall bring forth children. And good luck, ladies. Yeah, <laughs> have fun with that. Uh, and your desire shall be contrary to your husband, and he shall rule over you. Um, and it continues on. So here is the question, and it's a two-parter. Two-parter. So we'll we'll do the first part, mm -hmm. and then if we need to dive into the other, we can. So would Satan's offspring possibly be fallen angels that are having sexual relations between themselves and therefore increasing in number with time? Example, i.e., building up their army to wage war with God? Mm -hmm. Or do you think fallen angels are appearing in physical form amongst us, resembling humans in having sexual relations with humans, thus creating a, dynamic, a, a, a demonic hybrid that is living amongst us? Dang. So so many layers to that. So, so many layers. And, and again, I don't know the questions beforehand. Correct. I don't know who sends these in. Correct. Which I wish I did. Come and talk to me. No, this is good. Um, and so respectfully, very respectfully, I would not take, because it's kind of set up where like, who are Satan's offsprings, A or B, right? C, none of the above. None of the above. I would say none of the above here. 
right? And so let uh, so quickly we'll talk about the second part about Satan's uh, the fallen angels because that has a very specific yeah fallen angels. We're gonna get into that topic when we get to Genesis six. And half our church is so excited. Oh my goodness! Right. So for the moment three I verses, said two verses. Yeah, for two verses. <laughs> which, which, okay. Talking about zingers on a Sunday morning, you know, when when I said I was going to study Revelation, everybody wanted to know what was the first question. What's the mark of the beast? Mm-hmm. I mean, I had people sit in my office and say it was the COVID shot, wasn't it? It was me, guys. I sat in Nick's office and <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> no, yeah. And so everybody runs to these preconceived ideas of, or what is that? And it, and so the, and even you kind of were like, Ooh, I don't know when I said, you know, revelation is all about Jesus and the hope that we have in Christ. And it's I like, said, absolutely. The, what, what, what are you talking about? And it is, it is, but that's where we have to be biblical about this. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I knew the moment I say, Hey, we're going to study Genesis. What did everybody say? Who are the Nephilim? Who are the fallen? Who's the sons of God and the daughters of men? And like, you know, they want to know that. And uh, I'll see you at Genesis 6 as we talk about it. But there's there's actually a far more straightforward answer. Mm-hmm. Jesus answers this question for us uh, in, in John chapter 8. So uh, if you want to turn there. Uh, because again, at the easy, the, I don't want to say easy, right? But look back at Genesis and it said, hey, he... Uh, the offspring are going to bruise your heel, but he's going to bruise your head. Who, who crucified Jesus? The Pharisees. It's pretty simple, right? And so there's a passage um, in John chapter 8, and I'm starting in verse 39. Jesus is speaking with the Pharisees. And, and again, Jesus always had a gentleness mm-hmm. with the broken, the lost, the hurting, the doubter, the sinner, the oppressed always gentleness. Mm-hmm. The only people that he was just really ready to slap the religious ones were the religious ones, the fakers, the uh, clean on the outside of the cup, but the inside just full of nasty whitewashed tombs, the whitewashed tombs. Right. So, and that's where like Jesus sometimes just woke up one day and thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go pick a fight with these guys. Why? Cause they deserve to get kicked, but that doesn't fit in our, cultural understanding of this soft Jesus does this pet sheep on a sunny, you know, grassy hill. No. Some days he just woke up and thought, you know what? I just feel like knocking some people right in the skull. Go find the Pharisees. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's that's why we have problems with Jesus. And so here we go. John 8, starting in verse 39. And they answered him, because here's this big talk about Abraham. He said, so if the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because you find my words no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. And so verse 39, he's he's talking about, what do you mean your father? So Mm -hmm. they answered him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus responds to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham that he did. And he's talking about faith. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works of your, you're doing the works your father did. Mm -hmm. We have two different fathers, right? And we can understand that. We're not, we're not the same kids. We don't have the same dad. You're doing the works of your father. And they said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would have, you would love me for I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. There's the functional order of the Trinity that it was God's plan to send the son. So why, verse 43, why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning. Well, how was uh, the devil a murderer from the beginning? Because when did Adam die? When he ate from the tree, not 900 years later. So he murdered him because of spiritual death. In separation from God and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Talking about the devil. And when he lies, he speaks out of his own character, right? For he is a liar and the father of lies. 
But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. So the offspring of the devil, clear back to Genesis 3. Who's going to provide the heel bruise to Christ? The Pharisees, the religious elite, those that were fake on the outside and were, they're the devil's children on the inside. Jesus flat out tells us that. You're, that's who you are. You're the devil's offspring. So that's who they are. So uh, fallen angels, I think, would be a, a totally different topic. I think Jesus answers it very clearly for us who he's referencing. Which you'll have to wait to a later breakdown for yeah. us to talk about. And it always, and again, like I don't know if anybody's really noticed this, uh, as we've been walking through Genesis, what do we keep pointing back to? Jesus and the cross, mm -hmm. Jesus and the cross, Jesus and the cross. And so even this, it points to Jesus and the cross. And, and it also is going to tell us who's going to put him on the cross, the offspring of the devil. And that's the Pharisees. That was an easy one to me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, here we go. Here's the two part. You're like, I got this. Let, let, bam. Um, okay. Third question that came yeah. up. When God curses Eve, he says that he will greatly multiply her pain and childbirth. We, we just read that. Um, does this not imply that she would have already had children before this curse was established? Because if she had not had children before, how would she known? Uh, how would she have known what to compare it to or how it would be worse than before? Same thought, well, God looks at Adam and, ins, Adam and Eve and says, leave your father and mother and become one flesh. Who did Adam and Eve have to leave, leave. and cleave? He's setting, he's setting the mm. standard. So even though Adam and Eve didn't have an earthly father and mother to leave and cleave to each other, the standard of uh, biblical marriage he was putting even at the very beginning, even when there wasn't the concept of mother and father, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in the same breath here, um, I don't think she had children before the fall. Mm -hmm. I think it was only after the fall, right? Um, and and so we can have the connotation there. It, it could imply that childbirth would be looking differently before the fall if they never would have fell into sin mm -hmm. than it does afterwards, right? And so there, there probably is that, but I think it's just a, a standard. It gives us an explanation uh, of some things. And there's... There's actually a little bit of, of work that I've, uh, I haven't had a chance to dig really deep into uh, just because like on a Sunday morning, I, I try to think through what edifies the body, mm -hmm. you know, not just, hey, I want to geek out on That's every little thing. To, yeah. yeah, but even what does that truly mean that there would be pain in childbirth? Um, are we just talking specifically just that? There's, there's been, and I can't speak more into it because I haven't studied it, yeah. but I remember coming across a few things and it's like, ooh, when I get time just to geek out on my own, I need to look into that a little bit more. But I, answering the question, yeah, we get that. If she had not had children before, how would she, she wouldn't have. But, but what we are gonna say is the moment that she did pop out, you know, Cain and then Abel, why was that so painful? Hey, you remember that? Remember that real shiny red apple you had before? Mm. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be like this. Hmm. What are you thinking over there? I, He's got his, his stir. I'm, I'm just pro I'm just processing. Yeah. So again, a lot of of setting questions for us. Same thing with like leaving the father and mother. Well, they didn't have father and mother. How wh who'd they leave then? Like he he's setting standards. He's explaining. So. Sorry, I'm still. No, it's good. It's where my, my brain. It's, um, it's where your brain's going. Let me see if I can. Yeah, there's a little bit of frustration. <laughs> a little bit of frustration. Why is that, my man? Uh, I think you can talking, be honest on the breakdown. I, I think, you can be honest. <laughs> I don't think anyone ever has wondered if I'm honest on the breakdown. I think we talked about this a while back. I think it was in this season um, of the breakdown. You talked about uh, the... Um, that no one has ever come up to you uh -huh. and said, "Hey, that that was that that was a good sermon, is a little weak." <laughs> you know where it's like talking no, about got, our own spiritual other. growth. Yeah, like what our jobs as believers are to 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 dig in and in your own language, like to 
there is no end to the depth of our faith. And so it's it's our job to continually seeking and diving deeper, not more broad. Um, and so for me, even as we've walked through Genesis, uh, there's there's little nuances that have been like not a knock against you that just have been said flippantly that it's mm-hmm. like, holy cow, how how have I missed that? How did I not catch that? Or how has that not stood out to me? Why has it taken me 34 years and someone else standing up and saying shebang and then me having this moment of like oh no so that's the frustrating part like in in my own life in my own faith of something as simple as even looking and thinking through you know that question yeah why why have i never thought about that why has it taken 34 years and and honestly like i remember coming home all through bible college and it's like ashley guess what and it almost got to the point she's like i love that this is happening for you but like she had to hear all the geek outs like, before they were up, yeah it really was like did you know never and she's like no i didn't know because i didn't go to bible college you know like but just coming it, it really was that yep. and and i grew up going to sunday school i grew up going to vbs i grew up going to church with my grandparents and it's like they never told me any of this. What What is going on? And again, it is hard because, you know, for that pastor, that Sunday school leader, like what's going to edify the body? Mm-hmm. What's going to encourage and grow us in that? Um, so a quick little little talking about the, um, in the Hebrew, it can also be translated like sorrowful. So pain in childbirth is sorrowful. Did you and, look up the... Yeah, yeah. Okay. I looked up the yeah, and so the agony involves the physical act of childbirth, right, as well as the heartache surrounding the raising of young, uh, from conception to the end of the relationship between mother and child at death. Amen. <laughs> I can tell you from th- uh, from zero to three, there is some sorrow there. Yeah. So here's 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 a little bit of a promise. True, the woman's seed will crush the serpent. I think that's a reference to Jesus, right? But even the raising of godly children will not be without difficulty. So the same difficulty that we hear Adam getting, saying, hey, you're going to go out and work the land, and there's going to be thorns and thistles and the sweat of your brow, and, yeah, mom, you're going to have the same issues too. There's going to be thorns. There's going to be thistles. It's going to be the sweat of your brow. It's going to be a very sorrowful thing. Because we think of, like, we think the momentary physical pain in childbirth. Mm Mm-hmm. Like you're just reading through Genesis, you go, "Oh, childbirth is going to be hard and painful." Yeah. Not what happens after you bring a child into the world, and you, uh, to use a more old-fashioned word, rear them, you know, raising mm-hmm. them. But I think you could ask any woman, "What's more painful, the 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 labor and delivery of that child, or?" the rest of their childhood of raising them and and trying to guard and protect them and they still fall into yeah. sin and issues and the struggle and and not even just externally what's going on in the kid's life but also what's going on in mom's and dad's heart mm-hmm. you know and mom like how many moms like my heart just grieves for you guys but how many moms feel like I'm not a good mother 100% yeah if they're honest with themselves. If if they're truly honest, it's like that's there's the sorrow. Yeah. There's the pain. There's the so um but yeah, that's I'm still not finding exactly the little notes I was looking for, but we'll look at it. I'll look into it and see if I can You want to talk about sorrow? Um <laughs> oh. uh, this is a little fun <laughs> it's a little fun look into the Humison household. Um so our oldest is three years old. How's that going for you, bud? Let me tell you. How's that going? Uh, about as good as drinking spoiled milk can possibly <laughs> go. Um, we have such great high moments where, like, she'll, last night, this is a perfect example. So last night we go to pray, and her um, her school uh, has taught her a prayer. Um, and so she prays that prayer every night. Amen. Does not change. It's absolutely adorable. Um, and so last night, uh, she, it was very, this is the first time she's ever done it. She looked at London, my wife and I, and said, hey, we need to hold hands and we need to pray. Like We're just sitting down. Like, we haven't even brought everything over sitting down. Hey, we need to hold hands and pray, which we normally don't. She just mm-hmm. told, 
that's because that's how they do it at school. Yeah. And um, she says her prayer, and then we have added a little piece onto the back side of our prayer. Hey, what are you thankful for? Mm. Like, hey, what what are you thankful? Just a good reminder of like, hey, I'm thankful there's food on the table and thankful for my friends. Like, the things that we so easily as adults miss out on, like the Lord's goodness. Um, and so we go around and do that. So we have this really tender moment as a family. And like, as a dad, you're just like, I'm not a complete failure. Like I know <laughs> I've messed up, but Hey, we're at least shooting, you know, we're yeah. aiming in the right direction. So, um, <laughs> I'm waiting for the, and then a little out. while yeah. later, <laughs> there's the, um, I don't love God. Or I don't want to go to church. Like, there's this very defiant, like, it can flip on, it can flip oh, yeah. off. And then right before bed, um, I was putting our youngest to sleep, and um, we we love, love either Right Now Media, mm-hmm. which, if you don't know what Right Now Media is. Find us in the hub, and we'll find get you a, Yeah, yes. message yes. us, do whatever. Yeah. We'll get you on Right Now Media. Um, for our girls, you mm-hmm. know, to every night before bed, that's kind of like our bedtime routine. And so if it's not Right Now Media... It's the video that they watch in Calvary Kids. Mm, nice. um, and so it's Ollie. And so Ollie. she loves Ollie. And so the Bible story and the lesson. And Is it so Ollie the Owl? It's Ollie the Owl. Yeah. See, um, even the senior pastor knows so about that, Ollie. Yeah. So when they wrap up, um, there's always this question and like a toddler, you know, kind of phrasing. And so um, last night I am putting Blakely, our youngest, to bed. And I, like I can hear my wife having a conversation on the phone what are you doing? I text her. I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, your daughter wants to tell everybody that she knows that Jesus wants to be their friend. <laughs> I was like, got like an evangelistic I call like, ministry going on. Let me right tell before you, like, bedtime. my heart broke in like the most tender way. And I, was I didn't like, get a call Leighton. I didn't get a call. She Thank called you. her grandparent. I mean, she was calling <laughs> everybody. She just like worked down the list. And I was like, like pizza hut. What's oh, your order? Do you know that Jesus, Jesus loves you? <laughs> It was great. And then I know, I know some point this week, we're like, yeah. Hey, we're going to get up and we're going to go to church. We're going to go. I don't want to go to church. I hate God. And it's like, Oh boy. Yeah. We've already got that. Where that's more just trying to push the defiant boundaries. That's, not really yeah. a spiritual. It is. And so like we were talking out there a little bit, we yeah. were, you know, having boys, having girls, what's oh, easy yeah. stuff like that. And it is weird being the, the oldest on the staff, right? Yep. You are I, the oldest. I'm Nick. the old man. Um, my kids are the oldest. Mm-hmm. We've been through some seasons, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then as you continue to see God's heart work yeah. in your kids and, and how the fun little things when they're three and they want to call grandparents and make sure that they know about Jesus. But then as you see your teenage or adult children start to really embody like a heart for lost people mm-hmm. that they care about in their life, like it is moving. Yep. And the boldness that you see, like it is inspiring firing mm-hmm. in a way and it's just like you know but it, it starts yeah. it starts young like it, that didn't just happen overnight you know it, it starts when they're little and so just to encouragement to parents of especially of littles if you're wondering like what like the little prayers right before bed and the little baby's first bible bible stories that we read like how is this really going to be fruit like w- when they turn 18 they'll be fruit yep. I promise, you know. And to go back to something you've said, if you're asking the question, is it too early? It's already too late. Yeah. Yeah. If you're asking the question. Like, like it's never too yeah, early to never. start. And, and like being a pastor on <clears throat> staff, like I even had that question, mm-hmm. like with Leighton, like how we're going to read a Bible story. You're, you're one. This, yep. this is not going to do anything. And it's like, nope, this is, this is the routine we're building. This is what we're instilling in our kids. Cause have you already seen maybe even both of yours, but at least Leighton. Have you already seen her pick up little habits? Oh, absolutely. And you look at each other and say, oh, that's your daughter. Yep. So all the she, bad things are me, apparently. So if she can pick up all the bad habits, why does that mean she can't pick up the good habits? Yeah. You know, it's that whole country song where, like, I want to be just like you. And Oh, yeah. I, I don't listen to country, but I know the song. We, we know how much you love country. I hate country music. There's about <laughs> three country songs that I like. But there is that song, and it's just like... They're watching. Yeah. And and some of the greatest discipleship we can provide for our kids. Example. Yeah. Vibrant faith. And that's the thing I'm learning. And like y- you have kids that are, you are the oldest on staff. You're not that old though. I'm but the old man. You are the old man on staff. Your kids are far older. So mm-hmm. you, you've lived through that season. Um, but like even in the infancy and the youngness of our family, 
um, I'm learning. I always thought there had to be this formulaic, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. like this formula of if you do X, Y, and Z, yeah. my kids don't need to see perfection. Nope. My kids need to see the real rawness of everyday life. And they need to understand like when stuff blows up in your face, how you respond so good to that and, and the way you frame it. And like, this is not the Lord punishing us because we didn't spend enough time in the word. Like I made a stupid decision. I'm having to live with it. Hey, this is me. Like there have been times that I have held latent issues going to sleep and I am having my prayer time with the Lord, but I'm mm. praying out loud. That's not for my daughter. Yeah. But she's hearing me. She like, she is hearing those, those things that like I'm struggling with that. I'm just trying to like, Lord, you, Give me clarity. Like, I, yeah. I want to seek your face, and this feels like the right thing to do. I also know I'm a very manipulative person. So, <laughs> this very I'll easily. Make it seem yeah, like, this like is I from can you. make this my thing. And so, there's been those little nuances and those moments where it's like, oh, she is listening. Mm. Like, oh, she has picked it up. Mm -hmm. like I said, I say, oh, my goodness at home because I've started watching what I say. And the other day, she goes, oh, my goodness, daddy. And I was <laughs> like, oh, crud, you cannot. Do you say anything worse than, oh, yeah. my goodness, because she's going to repeat it. Oh, yes. I'm waiting for her to cuss in the middle of Are you? this. Oh, I that is my biggest fear in ministry. I think the funniest thing that hit me was the first time hearing all of my kids say butt face. <laughs> I, I won't tell you which parent that came from, but Ashley needs prayer. <laughs> she needs prayer. No. It, it, being in student ministries, like, you know, I can't go quite toe to toe with them because they'll say anything. Yeah, but he's like, "Quit being a butt face," you know. <laughs> and I'll say that, and then we—I think we were in the van one time, and and each of them, in different circumstances, like, no, 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 butt face. And I'm just like, oh, and part of you, you want to laugh because like a little five year old saying butt face to somebody, especially it's... like if somebody cut us off, is hilarious. But it's like, and then my wife just kind of does that look, like. Pastor, mm -hmm. do you want to do you want to talk to your child about this here? And it's like, look. well, here's the proper word we would know. It yeah. is just like, ah, oh. but if they're picking up those, you know, what else are they picking up? Yep. And 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 that's the that's another great reason to be uh, transparent in your faith, mm -hmm. you know, where it doesn't need to be. Oh, this is a very personal thing. Like, um, I think sometimes we use that as an excuse because we don't have a spiritual life. Mm. The and anonymity we, of hiding behind. Yeah. And so we say that, but the practically what we're, ex, we're showing to our kids is, you know, a practical agnosticism mm -hmm. where yeah, I don't know if God exists or not because our life doesn't really reflect anything like that. Like just be, just be real, be transparent and, and allow them to see, see that faith, yeah. you know. And what's great, pull that out, you know, from the 30,000 foot view is, that's not just if you have kids. Yeah. Like you could be you could be a single teacher. Yep. You could be somebody who works in a doctor's office. You could be the person and you living out your faith in a very authentic, real way that doesn't have to be one cookie cutter or formulaic, but it's real. Yep. And it's again appropriate. But yeah, you know, like you struggle, like everybody struggles, yeah. and you're willing to be vulnerable and share those things and allow people I don't know many people in my own story and journey that have come to know the Lord or grown in their faith because my life looked good. <laughs> that actually probably pushed them more yeah. away. The, the hey, sit at my table, mm -hmm. cry, have an honest conversation, all those stories far outweigh. Oh, for sure. The, hey, help me understand this, like, or, hey, this really stood out to me, like, those are the conversations that I I don't have to think about. Like, I could think of 10 names. Yeah. The ministry of presence, I think, is another big thing. Where it's not even yes. maybe you're opening your table and you're having those big ministry or meaningful conversations, but you're just together. Doing life. Just doing life. And the ministry of presence is pretty, pretty impactful. Yep. I mean, that's Job's friends, about the only good thing that they did, ministry of presence, you know? And it just... I don't know there. I think there's just, I asked one of my students one time, like, Hey, like what was the greatest thing that you took away from me as a youth pastor with like sermon? And he's like, there was one sermon that I really appreciated. He goes, but it was more of this. You were there. Yep. 
and even in the in the ministry we were about a year in so i was asking the students like okay hey decent foundation what 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 can we do better and they're like i mean just the fact that you're here and it's like i can't be a good youth pastor just because i showed up but for like i had one senior he's like yeah you're like my fifth or sixth youth pastor in my high school time so for him ministry of presence is all it was like he just knew like if i needed nick he was there when i walked into church nick was there when i nick was there like and and hopefully you know not that that's like that's not the bare minimum of yeah. like oh yeah that's i just need to show up but like that's a great foundation just just be there yeah so it's all good great questions i really did Some appreciate questions. them bring so. bring back the uh the fallen angel one here in a few weeks and three more chapters yeah two more chapters yep yeah, because we'll start three. four. Yeah. Then we do four. Then we'll do five. Then we'll do six. It'll come back. It'll come back around. Yeah. Five will be interesting. Some people have asked, how are you going to handle genealogies? I'm excited about five. Um, and then once we get into the crazy stories, Lot's daughters, yep. you know, uh, Tamar, it, how do, do we and how do we do it? Do we need to put like a PG thirteen rating? You probably gonna have to. I mean, when when Lot's daughters think that they got to reproduce with their dad, I mean, I don't know how to walk gently around that. Yeah, you, yeah. There's gonna be late. Yeah, yes. The answer to that's yes. Okay. The breakdown's easier because I don't know families sitting together listening to the breakdown, <laughs> but we we have stories that I'm even, gonna have a code word that means. Listen to the breakdown. Yeah, we'll talk more we'll in talk, depth. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I mean, we have stories of parents who, on the way home, have asked mom and or parents of texted us <laughs> of stories about them asking questions, clarifying questions on the way yeah. home. Don't say orgy. Don't um, say so orgy. Much. All I was doing was reading Galatians. Okay, guy, I was reading Galatians. And now they want to know what an orgy is. But it was a great pivot, though. It was <laughs> such a good that pivot. Text message was so he funny. said. He said, yeah, my kid wants, dad, what's orgies? Son, you misheard him. He said, ogre. He said, ogre. Don't be a Shrek to your wife. You know, that's a great place to that's start. Great... There's nothing wrong with that. As you would say, small questions, small answers. Small questions, that small answers. That was a big question with a great pivot. Uh, it, Ashley was so great about that. Like when the girls would ask, well, how, like when she was pregnant, the older girls would ask, how is the baby going to come out? Well, that's why doctors go to school. They learn how to do that. Oh, okay. You know, where some that's, of us think, okay, well, this is uh, this party part. That's and that not party. where, that's not my gifting. I've already started explaining <laughs> everything to Leighton. I figured that, you know, by the time she's 11, 12, and we do that conversation, mm -hmm. that I will have crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's before I ever get there. Dude, it's, okay. It, it, here's the, the fun part of me being the older guy. Yeah. And everybody else is having the younger one. It's so funny when you got to have those conversations. Because it's just awkward. And like nobody does it well. Yep. The best way to have those conversations is just to have them. Yep. Just rip the band aid yeah. off. And yeah. The, like when I knew my son came downstairs one day and he was reading his Bible and he walks up and he's like, Dad, what is sexual sin? Here we go, guys. You know, and again, small Go questions. ask your mom that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we're the spiritual leaders. We don't punt that. Right. Um, and so, but there really is an openness like where. Um, our girls can come to me and we can talk about those things. Yep. My son can go to my wife and we like it. There is an openness in there. We don't yep. want it like, hey, we don't talk to mom about this. And, you know, there was some times I had to look at my son and be like, hey, the girls are young. So if you have questions like while I'm at work, like you can talk to mom, just, you know. Don't blurt it out in front Don't of blurt it, it out. Yep. Yeah, you're not sitting around having mac and cheese. And so, hey, mom, what's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> give her a deer in headlights kind of look or whatever. But, you know, it, there's no perfect way to do it. Yeah. It really is uh, small questions, small answers, but just having that. Because my heart was always, you know, before their friends tell them what it is, before they hear it on the yeah. bus or whatever, like I, I wanted to set the, the pace and the tone for those conversations. And, and even like, you know, as we're talking about body parts and different actions, like, hey, I'm going to give you the slang for it too because I don't want you to hang out with friends. And they're like saying something like, oh, what's that? And he gets fun. laughed yeah. and you get laughed at. And it's like, I want you to be educated. 
but and we were always a big proponent in our home of using correct terminology. Thank you. And we've talked about that before. Yes. Right. Boys have penises. Girls have vaginas. It's okay. Right. You don't call an elbow uh, the bendy thing in the middle of your arm, or you know, I do. You, that's what you call it. <laughs> Sorry. So like just and and I could tell you horror stories of um, child abuse that would have been caught earlier. If the kid would have been taught proper terms, able to communicate, yeah, what because they were using the pet terms um, that they've always heard, yep. that they've picked up from mom, dad, whoever, and it's and it actually delayed uh, the ability for proper people to. Intervene. Oh, that's what's yep. going, and so they didn't know to intervene, and so like, I had asked a question as a pediatric nurse one time, and a kid had a rash in his diaper area, and I said, you know, is it. And I, I had to use the word penis. And she, and she like, she had to write it down where it was at. And I was like, you, it's, it's you can't say penis part. around your two, two year old. He has one. You don't even have one. He does. He doesn't know what it is. Yeah. Like you, you have to teach him what it, you know, but I just thought I was like a grown woman had to write down penis on a piece of paper because she couldn't say that to me. I thought, oh, this poor kid, you know? <laughs> That's great. This is like, oh my goodness, you know, <laughs> and, and we might not agree, and that's okay. I don't think that's biblical or you know a salvific issue, but but I would say there is um, there is child safety that would be tied Involved, to that. Yeah. So we turn the breakdown. This is turning, yeah, This is here. We go. What other deep theological season four? The breakdown is parenting questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, um, if if uh, you are new, uh, I think we did a good job last week Welcome. about glad, uh, glad yeah. you're here. He's Nick. I'm John. <laughs> Producer. He's the brains. I'm something else. I'm no. the beauty, apparently. Beauty and the Beast. I oh, like it. Gosh, I'm not. Can we do this. for the graphic? Like Nick Pierce, the no, Beast. We should do the Beauty and the Beast, and the, but we'll <laughs> overdub our heads. Uh -huh. So you can be on Bell, and I'll be on the Beast. Oh, great. There's no dancing. theological implications there. No. Of me on a... <laughs> That'll come nice little week. yellow dress <sighs> goodness gracious um that doesn't cross any boundaries no does not it? at all we haven't talked about that before at all on the breakdown i think the producer likes it <laughs> we got a head nod yes the producer and i can have a one-on-one discipleship <laughs> meeting later <laughs> once he's done editing this episode um but what else you got uh next week uh as you're listening to the sermon whether you're live uh, on campus watch online or listening later on in the week and maybe you have a question that comes up, uh, feel free to text your questions into the breakdown. Uh, we'll put that number in the video description, the the podcast notes. I think that's what they call it, whatever they call it. Um, but that number, just text the breakdown, no spaces, to 573-679-3760, and we will do our best to respond, not answer, but to respond to those questions. Uh, but we're going to hang up our hats, take off our shoes, turn the lights off, Press the... What are we, Mr. Rogers? I don't know. We got to switch <laughs> out, put a new cardigan on, switch We should shoes. do that every episode, come Won't in and like... my neighbor? Um, yeah, we, we've got other things to do, but we're going to we're gonna wrap up episode 10. Episode 10 of uh, of The Breakdown. It's been fun. It's been real. It's, it's been, been real, real fun. fun. But we're out of here. Enjoy your guys' week. We'll see you Thank next you. week.